Okay, everyone was very interested in the how much is my car insurance on my Tesla Model 3 video. So I thought what I could do today is give a full breakdown of every single cost since I bought my Tesla. Going all the way from actually buying the car itself, the taxes, the insurance, all the way down to the little things like the car mats and the USB stick that I had to buy so that I can use sentry mode. So we'll start off with the actual car itself. I opted to buy the standard range Model 3, which is the cheapest one, at a price of £39,990. I went for Midnight Silver Paint, which after seeing all of the colors now, I still think is the best one. Let me know if you disagree in the comments. I think blue is a close second though. Metallic silver cost an extra £950. The 18 inch aero wheels were included. Also, people keep telling me you can take the wheels off and the alloys look really nice underneath. I am aware of that. You can stop telling us. I just don't mind the aero wheels and I don't want to scratch the alloys underneath just yet. I chose the black interior rather than the white one. The white interior costs quite a lot more, but I personally think the black one's a lot nicer and way easier to keep clean. Autopilot itself is actually included, but the full self-driving capability was an extra £5,000 800 pounds so that really was steep and then there's a delivery and registration fee of 850 pounds which brings me to 47,590 pounds but the government pay for 3,500 of that because they're trying to get people to use electric vehicles at the minute so basically my very first cost for the car itself is £44,090. Now, I've had a look on the website today, and for the same configuration, it would now be 46290 So it's gone up by a couple of thousand for whatever reason. And the deposit is now £750, whereas my deposit was £2,000. I don't know. It seems like they mess with their prices quite a lot for some reason. I don't really know why. When I first originally looked at buying a Model 3 several months ago, I was able to choose which wheels I wanted. Whereas now, the only way I can get the fancier wheels is by purchasing the way more expensive model car. Now, I was fortunate enough to be able to purchase the car in cash, but if you were to purchase it in monthly now, you could get it for a £6,000 down payment and then pay £623 a month for 48 months. Now, I actually own a limited company. So I bought my Model 3 through my business rather than through my personal accounts. I wouldn't have been able to afford it if I was buying it personally. And because it's an electric car, the UK government have a lot of electric vehicle incentives at the minute. Now, I'm no tax expert, so I'm going to try and go through these, but I'm sorry if I get anything slightly wrong here. So a big incentive at the minute is electric vehicles can use this thing called 100% first year allowance. And what I believe that means is that the money you spend on the car in the first year that you have it is all 100% tax deductible. Basically, the full amount can be seen as a business expense. And because I bought it in cash, that means that a full £44,000 is seen as a business expense, which reduces my company profits by £44,000 and effectively also reduces how much tax I have to pay by exactly £8,377.10. Now, I'm not going to leave that figure up there because this is how much we spend, not how much we save. But obviously, that is a massive tax saving. Also, when you you have a company car that you sometimes use for personal use like if I was to do something like visit my parents that's not a business trip whereas me dropping merch off at the post office that would be a business trip so for right now there's a benefit in kind of 16% but I think this April that benefit in kind is being reduced to 0% just as another incentive to buy an electric vehicle so this means for my personal account in taxes I will have to pay £1,410.88 and then my company will have to pay £973.51 in national insurance taxes. But like I said, if I'm understanding this correctly, those numbers will disappear after this April. So after I bought the car, I also needed a way to charge the car when I'm at home because just plugging it into one of these little fellas is really slow and it takes ages. So I bought the official Tesla wall connector. There are other ones available, but Tesla's official one was £470 and I can't install this myself because it involves messing with the voltage or the amps or something. I don't really know. So a professional electrician installed it in my garage for £195, which I believe is actually a pretty good price. When I was looking online for how much this would cost, I could only find people in the US and they were saying that theirs was a minimum of about $500. We're also going to add my electric garage door to the list as this just is a lot more convenient. I obviously could get away with not having the electric garage door, but for me it was worth it for the convenience of just parking your car in the garage. This cost £1,350 for the door and for the person to come and install it. It took about three months for me to actually get the car from when I originally ordered it online, but about a week before it was ready to be collected, I was given a text message that had my registration plate so it meant I was able to order my car insurance. As you may know from the other video, this was with Direct Line and it cost £2,070.88. However, update on this, it was reduced the other day by 56 quid because in January the insurance on my Citroen expired, so I went from a no claims bonus of one to two. So now my car insurance is £2,014.88. That sounds quite expensive, but I think considering that I'm 23 and considering it's expensive and fast car, I think 2,000 quid could have been a lot worse. Also, while I'm here talking about the insurance, it was pointed out in the comments of that other video, Direct Line is not 
not the only insurer I thought it was. That's kind of what Tesla themselves led me to believe, but there are a few other companies in the UK that will insure your Tesla, you just have to shop around. Then I was ready to actually collect the car, so I had to order a taxi from Sheffield to the Tesla Centre in Leeds. This cost £80. We're adding literally every expense here. I bought a boot cover on Amazon. This was £79.95, which is quite pricey for a boot cover, I think, but it was the only one I could find. Most of the Tesla Model 3 accessories out there are in the US, so I feel really limited with what I can get. But to be fair, the boot cover, it does the job nicely. I'll leave the affiliate link in the description if you want to actually buy it. I bought some car mats. These were £49.98. They do the job. They're pretty easy to clean because hair and rocks and stuff don't stick to them. But there isn't as much coverage as I'd like. Little pebbles would still get caught along the outside. The place where I rest my foot on the left isn't covered at all. So recently I've gone ahead and bought some expensive car mats for £165. I haven't installed them yet because I want to get the car properly cleaned before I do. But if you want to see a review on them, let me know. I have two dogs. One of them is asleep behind me. So I bought a dog seat cover for the back seat. That was £21.89. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description. That works not just for Teslas, that works for every car. I bought a wrap for the central console because the shininess would just get mucky really easy and it would show up your fingerprints. It's a carbon fibre wrap, which I think is really nice. This cost £35.10 because I had to get it shipped from America. You need a USB stick if you want sentry mode to work, which is basically like a built-in dash cam. So when you're driving around, it records all four cameras and you can save specific moments if you want to. So that was £8.27 off Amazon, but then that one stopped working for some reason. So I bought another one for £6.30. Once again, I'll leave an affiliate link. I also got an outdoor extension cable so that when I'm visiting friends or family, obviously they don't have a Tesla wall connector installed. So I use the extension cable to charge my car from their wall socket. I have heard some people say you shouldn't use an extension cable, but I've not had any problems at all so far. And the wall connector that comes with the car is just nowhere near long enough. If you've got any info on that or suggestions, let us know in the comments. Because obviously if it's dangerous, I'll stop doing it. I got some acoustic foam to stick to the garage. That was 19 99 That means I can open the door without me worrying about me damaging the paint against the wall. I don't know why it's acoustic foam. You could get any foam, but the foam I used is in the description. And then that was stuck up with some adhesive spray, but obviously that damages the wall, so if you want to get something else, that's up to you. Anyway, that was £6.13, and that's actually all of the expenses. I've got some info about charging and how much that's cost me so far, but I'll keep that separate. But all in all, these little fellas come to a grand total of £50,996.87, which is a lot of money. Okay. Now, as I said at the beginning, my corporation tax bill has been reduced by £8,000, and I'm also VAT registered, so a lot of the things that I've bought, I can claim back the VAT on them, which is about 20%. So if you want to see it like that, we can minus off about £10,000 in money that I'll be reimbursed. So obviously it's a lot of money. Do I regret it? No, not at all. I think if you can afford the car, it's an amazing car, and I absolutely love it. I think if I was buying the car again, knowing what I know now, I probably would have spent an extra £10,000 and bought the long-range version. There's not been anywhere that I've been where I've felt like I was about to run out of charge, but if I had an extra 70 miles, I think it would just take the worry out of my mind completely. But, you know, if this channel goes well, potentially we could swap it for a Model Y in the future or something like that. I don't know. But right now, I'm getting everything that I need out of the Model 3, and it is very, very fun to drive. But I can't go very fast when Flossie, my dog's in the car, because it makes us sick. So when I come off a roundabout, I have to put the accelerator down like that instead of like that, which is way less fun. Right, okay, we've got that out of the way. Let me give you some data on charging. So primarily I charge the car from home, you know, probably like 95% of the time. So this graph shows my energy usage. This is my gas and my electricity. So in August, our gas and electricity was fairly similar. Then if we move to October, you can see my usage went up a lot. But that's not me using the car. The red line is gas. So all that is, is me leaving the heating on a lot more because it's getting into winter and it was a lot colder. So if you pan over again, continue to use a lot more heating than we did in the summer. But December, which is the month where we got the Tesla, my electricity, which is the blue line, it's barely gone up at all. And that's with me charging it in the garage back to about 85% every night. Now, obviously it was Christmas, so we were away from the house for like a week and a half. So this isn't a totally accurate representation, but I just don't have January's data yet. But I'm predicting that for me anyway, it's really cheap to charge my car at home. I'm not smart enough to give you the exact numbers because I don't really understand all this energy usage stuff, but I know that it's not going up by much. And at the minute, I pay 53 quid a month for my gas and electricity, so it, it's it's pretty cheap. I've used superchargers three times since getting the car at the beginning of December. I went to visit my parents up in Bishop Auckland, which is about 100 miles from Sheffield, and I stopped at a supercharger and it cost me £6.24. Charged the car from a bit from my dad's garage, and then on the way back, I stopped at another supercharger and it cost me £3.12, and then I just put it on charge when I got home. Over Christmas, we travelled to Becky's parents 
parents' house in Wales, which is 171 miles away. We only needed to stop to charge once. It cost us £8.84 on the way there and £7.68 on the way back. Then I went to my parents again at New Year. £5.28 there, £1.68 to get back. So is the car expensive to buy? Yeah. Is the car expensive to charge? No, it really isn't. It's a lot cheaper than when I used to buy petrol. All right, that is all the numbers. Do whatever you want with them. I'll try and get back to you if you have anything you want to point out, mention, compare in the comments. Lots of people will watch this video not aware of my other channel, so I have another channel with a million subscribers, which is primarily where most of my incomes come from, just to answer that question. Also, thank you to the nine people that purchased a Tesla with my referral link. That seems pretty mental, but if you plan on buying a Tesla and you want a thousand free supercharger miles, my referral link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We upload at least every Saturday Tesla Model 3 related content. All right, see you later.